Le Pita Zingamba, Man of Action to Man of Solution. Think outside the box. Hey, Paris Dula, hey, Paris Wush. Why are Welcome to the 2016 live presidential debate from Mulungushi's International Conference Center in Lusaka. I will be your host. My name is Costa Mwansa. Zambia will decide who will be the country's next president. They have made their promises, held their rallies, but tonight we put those promises to the test. Big round of applause as I welcome from the United Party for National Development, Mr. Haga in the my ladies and gentlemen. The only female candidate in this year's presidential election representing the Forum for Democracy and Development, President Edith Nawakwi. <laughs> Peter Sinkamba from the Greens, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Mr. Winter Kavimba from the Rainbow Party. And finally, Dr. Xavier Jishimba from the United Progressive Party, UPP. We'll start this evening's debate with a critical look at energy. Now, Zambia is said to be running out of electricity. Unless we come up with a plan, the next government is going to have trouble in keeping the lights on. Our country's demand for energy has been steadily going up, and yet projects designed to give us more power are being stalled. Zambia is in an energy crisis, causing job losses and a halt, or rather a decline, in terms of production in the economy. Mr. Sinkamba, what is your reaction to the story and obviously the sentiments setting the tone for our agenda? Energy. Thank you very much. The biggest problem is that this country is broke. You have no money. And that's why, for the Green Party, the starting point is let's make money. And that's why, as the Green Party, as I come into this election, I have fed six billion dollars backed here for, for that kind of intervention. We have a number of problems here. Number one, uh, we, we have we failed to manage or harness our, 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 our resource, which is solar. Um, we have failed to harness wind. We have failed to harness our geothermal. We have failed to, to harness our uh, biomass and so on and so forth. So the, the interventions that are required is to pump in money. And that's why, as a Green Party, we have budgeted seven billion dollars from the 36 billion dollars to be invested in energy so that we're able to scale up the energy from the current uh, 1800 uh, megawatts to about 4000 megawatts by 2020 and uh, scale it up up to uh, 30,000 megawatts by 2030 so for, for the green part we do not have a problem the strategies which we have eight strategies one we are looking at climate change mitigation two we are looking at demand side management three we are looking at energy finance, which is the $7 billion. So we are looking at policy reforms and the, um, uh, the legal reforms. Five, we are looking at research and development. Six, we are looking at scaling up infrastructure. Seven, we are looking at structural reforms, where we have to dismantle the entire uh, uh, ZESCO and so on and so forth. So for us as a Green Party, we, we think that uh, we have no problem to manage the energy problem in this country. Candidates, it's a situation of... Too many graduates, few jobs. But I think the youth should not only be looked at as those looking for jobs. What sustenance can we give the Greens? With the $36 billion in your bag, how will you create the jobs? <clears throat> Thank you very much. Um, first of all, you must understand that numbers don't lie. We have got a population of 15.7 million Zambians. And out of this population, only 900,000 are in informal, uh, informal employment, with government only employing less than 300,000 and 500,000 in the informal sector. But the, the, the biggest employer is agriculture, which employs about 3 million in rural areas. Agriculture is the anchor policy for the Green Party. When I'm talking about the $36 billion, it's coming from agriculture. And it's not this manga manga agriculture of maize. The agriculture we're talking about is high value agriculture. We have identified, identified 10 crops led by Marijuan. And, uh, and, and we are saying, we are saying, 
of the 3 million people that are into agriculture today who are the very, very poor, it's because they're engaging in, a, in an activity which is worthless. You know, you don't need 3 million tons of maize in this country to eat and be able to, to live. No, we just need between 600,000 to 700,000 uh, metric tons of maize. So pushing farmers to cultivate more and more maize, we are wasting everyone's time. So as a Green Party, what we're saying is, number one, we are going to move these people away from uh, uh, cultivation of maize. We we'll just give them sufficient uh, inputs to cultivate only up to 700,000 metric tons of maize. Then engage them in this high value agriculture so that they're able to make big money. The 36 billion dollars are talking about, that's what we must be sharing at the end of the I'm day. I'm sure very, very, very many of the candidates will be good back if there's anybody who wants to react, or but I'll start with you, President Nawaku. Uh, thank you very much. I just heard from my colleague that uh, maize is for food because there's, a, there's a, an assumption that you only grow maize for subsistence. But you can make products for maize. You can make biodiesel. You can make cooking oil. The country for a long time has assumed that maize is just for consumption. I hear President Nawaku saying maize is just about food yes it is first before you can even go to the office or invent anything you need to have eaten something i think you didn't get me right okay i was responding to him saying that maize is just for food i said there are other products you can make for maize 10 to 15 seconds thank you very much maize is the, a poor people's uh, good i know to impoverish the Zandans, hey, tell me if you tell her, I need to do a battle. Mm. If you want to continue impoverishing the Zandans, continue financing maize. Already maize is consuming about 65% of the Ministry of Agriculture budget. And the, as you move again, to even increase in terms of giving fertilizers, you are going to consume 80% of the grain. Can you work? No, let me finish. Now, coming to the issue of, uh, the issue of maize and the uh, biodiesel. Look, maize is a worthless crop in terms of biodiesel. You, you know, from, from marijuana, you need just one acre to, produ uh, to, to, to produce diesel, which is going to come from about 20 acres. Yes, no, President, yes, no, President, no, five seconds. Yes, yes. yes. With, I need to wind up, I need to wind up the debate on agriculture very quickly. I, I want to ask him, mm. um, he is uh, dwelling so much on uh, Marijuana. The programs that we have done as FDD are not just about maize, they are soya beans, chickens, and all that. And livestock is so dependent on grain for feed. I want a solution from him as to how we're going to sustain the livestock sector Thank you without you. maize. So let me explain. Grain is how we are going to set out the problem. You just need 500,000 metric tons of maize for eating and the excess 300,000 metric tons will go to livestock. You don't need to finance 3 million tons of maize. You're wasting everyone's money. Thank you so much, Green Party. Thank you so much. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, in the live audience. And of course, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. May I have your attention, please? Thank you so much. To the millions of joining me now is Pamela Chisanda, who is Country Director for Water Aid Zambia. Pamela, thank you so much for joining us. Describe for us just how critical the situation is as regards water in the country. Uh, Costa, we have heard here this evening that numbers don't lie. So I'll start with the numbers. In this country, about 6.5 million people do not have access to safe drinking water, and half that number live in the rural areas. When it comes to sanitation, we have over 60% of the people living in the rural areas not having access to adequate and effective sanitation. So in terms of access, you will see that our country, there is a challenge. We have very few people accessing these basic services. These basic services. So when it comes to results, the impact of lack of clean water, lack of self-sanitation is that every year in this country, 14,000 people die 
due to preventable diseases. This is out of a population of 14 million people. So you can see just how bad the situation is when you look at the number of people that are dying on an annual basis due to preventable diseases. So what would you like to see the next government do about the water situation? Obviously, the next government has to prioritize investment in water, sanitation, and hygiene. Currently, the levels of investment in this sector are quite low. On an annual basis, for instance, we need $200 million to go to urban water, sanitation, and hygiene. We are currently only, only investing $80 million. So there's a shortfall of $120 million. This is where we need the government to come in and invest enough resources so that we can be able to reach everyone everywhere by 2030. Thank you so much. Pamela Chisanga is country director, Water Aid Zambia. You heard those figures don't lie, $120 million of a shortfall. Water and sanitation features high on what was the Millennium Development Goals, now the Sustainable Development Goals, goal number six, are made to believe. And obviously the statistics have been given. <laughs> Let me begin with the Green Party. Thank you very much. I think we are all agreed, and Frederick from Pamela's uh, conversation, that this country is broke. <laughs> You are only investing $80 million and you have a shortfall of $120 million. That's supposed to be paid cash in certain institutions. <laughs> you, you, uh, you have a problem because your resource envelopes, like I've always said, are so constrained. Cons 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 you are only generating $5 billion. That is your budget, total budget. How can you invest much out of that? And that's why as a Green Party we're saying, Let's forget about this nonsense. Let's think outside the box and make money. We are saying out of the $36 billion we're going to generate, we're going to have what we're going to call the poverty reduction strategic plan, which is going now to, uh, to, 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 to uh, have that money for use to, to pump into, uh, in, in, into water and sanitation, for example. So we are saying if we pump in, for argument's sake, $5 billion on water and sanitation, then all these problems so the thirty-six about billion dollars is a solution to all our problems. Amen now for you. <laughs> the Greens, the rule of law, and all there is to say about governance. It's, it's quite broad. We've got a referendum coming, um, the Public Order Act, freedom of the media. But very quickly, how do we summarize these issues? Greens. You see, you have a referendum, for example, you've mentioned, where you've told people to vote yes or no and have not shared with these people the content of that referendum or of the Bill of Rights. They don't know, up to now, they don't know exactly what is contained therein. Government circulated that. They have not translated into local languages. How do you expect these people to understand what is happening? So we, we, we think that we can make decisions and, and make decisions on their behalf without giving them space to also make an informed position. So really, Provided we are going to have this top-down approach in the management of our country, we are not going to resolve the issue of accountability, the issue of good governance. So we think that you need a bottom-up approach where decisions must be made grassroots, including the budgeting issues, including the allocation of resources, then we are going to see this country moving forward. Greens, the question. How is the next government going to pay for all these things that we're talking about? Fixing the economy. The IMF has already warned that if Zambia wants to borrow more or put this country back on its economic road path, they must put an end to subsidies on fertilizer, electricity, pump prices on fuel. In particular, the new government will need to address this come August 12th. Now, mining, obviously, as you can see here, is suffering. Copper prices have plummeted. Obviously, the demand from China is low. Corruption, we're still continuing to talk about this. The cost of living for me, a very important issue. The cost of basic essential commodities continues to go up. Candidates, let me put to you a myriad of economic challenges for this country. Lending rates are now hitting 40%. A double-digit inflation hit 21%. Last year, we were described as probably the worst performing currency in the world. We've borrowed more than we can repay. The IMF are preaching that they come back after the election. You need to begin to cut down on subsidies, but this means the cost of living will still go up. 
I'll start with you. Are okay. still on the economy? On the economy. I'll be getting yes. questions on the economy. Peter Sinker. Now, let me warn you, the Zambians. The issue of IMF coming in this country is real. You have borrowed money and you need to pay that money back. <laughs> there is no way they can sit idle when your debt portfolio has risen like that. So, unless you hear what I am saying, <laughs> unless you get to my solution, unless we bring in $6 billion in this economy, you are in for a very serious high jump come September this year. <laughs> the, the story is very straight. One, Copa, forget about it today. You must understand that the, 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 the international community is moving on. They are no longer depending on copper for, 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 for electricity, uh, in terms of conductivity, uh, in terms of piping. There is now diversification such that the, 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 the demand for copper is, is going and going and going. We are currently at about 24 million tons per annum globally. And that is going to come down by 2030 to 14 million tons because one, you have not struck any uh, productive uh, 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 or, or reserves. Secondly, there is no demand for this product. So if you don't get out of this mess, if you don't think outside the box, you Zambians, let me tell you, <laughs> IMF is going to come and you are in for a very serious high jump. Thank you so much, Peter Sinkham, but thank you so much. My <coughs> question to the incoming president is how are you going to deal with the matter of pensioners in Zambia? We have followed the campaign trail around the country from 90, uh, 90 days ago, and uh, no one seems to be coming clear as to what happens, because below where you are standing, there are civil servants. Currently, I have a record of 8,000 retirees of 1997 have not been paid. Litigated in court 205, December 18. They have not been paid. Please, can I have your comment on that? I'll be starting with you, Greens. I need to take one very important question. I know I'll start with you because you talked about the dwindling lifespan, uh, lifespan of mining. But what grapples our economy right now? There's so much talk about taxation. Big businesses failing to pay the correct taxes, but also the issue of VAT returns, and also just the high cost of pay on the ordinary employee. Action Aid um, will give us a question. Nalucha Zira is the country director. Let's get that quick question on taxation for the candidates. Microphone. My question is around the behavior of corporates in our country. According to the Minister of Mines, last year no mining company paid the 20% mineral royalty tax in Zambia. Further, one of the biggest uh, companies, the mining giants we have, KCM, has not filed its annual returns according to the Zambian Companies Act. So what are you going to do about this corporate impunity? When you get Thank you. Non-remittance of taxes. Mineral royalty taxes were not paid and others by the big conglomerates. Thank Peter you. Sinkamba. Thank you. First of all, pensions. I said that uh, we have $6 billion. <laughs> and the total Congolese for government, including pensions, is $12 billion. So for us, we have no problem. We'll pay it off. And that will be the end of the day. Coming to the issue of mining, and with that, that I, can, I can assure you within a year. Now, coming, coming to the issue of mining, the biggest problem you have in mining is failure to account for minerals. And uh, we as a Green Party have a strategy. We are going to create what we are going to call the Mineral Revenue Accountability Department within the Ministry of Mines, which is going to work... Um, in line like what, what you serve in ZCCM, the Meteorological Accounting Unit, so that we are able to account for each and every ounce of the, 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 the mineral mined. And if government will have that data, there is no way any mining company will cheat. So our failure today to account for minerals is because we do not have a system in place. And that's why we are saying as the Green Party, Mineral Revenue Accountability Department created, and that would be a thing of the past. We see minerals paying the Zambian people, period. This is where we now prove your worth. Green Party. <laughs> Fellow Zambians, if you want to be rich, you must vote for me.
I have got six billion dollars coming now. I'm the only politician here who has come with a bag of money for six billion dollars. So if you want to remain poor, vote any one of them. Don't vote for me. Now to the live thank you so much. To the live audience right here at Mulungoshi, the viewers watching at home, especially to the live audience, a big round of applause. Peter Sinkham, before the Green Party, you've been fantastic. Thank you so much for coming. Zambia. Do you want to get rich? Or do you want to remain poor like this man? Remember, poverty is not by accident. It is self-inflicted by your choice, your vote and it can be eradicated by your choice, your vote, by voting for the right presidential candidate. If you want to get rich, vote for the right candidate. Peter Sinkamba, the man of solutions. The Green Party Manifesto has been rated by economists around the globe as being one of the very few good ideas that has been put forward at any recent election in any country in the world. Given that the world is now moving toward legal medical marijuana at least, if not full legalization, the Green Party Manifesto on Marijuana proposes to make use of Zambia's comparative and absolute advantage in growing 10% of the world marijuana production and thus supply the rest of the world. The Forbes magazine says the Green Party Manifesto is a thoroughly good idea and an eminently sensible policy. Action Head Zambia says of all political parties participating in the election in Zambia this year, the Green Party has the best manifesto economic blueprint put forward. We now present a synopsis of the Green Party marijuana industrialization policy for Zambia. Marijuana is the most valuable cash crop in the world. In fact, it aims at least 4.7 million US dollars per hectare. Marijuana is capable of benefiting more than 200,000 small and large-scale farmers with a gross income of at least 36 billion dollars per year. Marijuana industrialization can also be used for the manufacture of medicines to treat HIV AIDS, cancers, epilepsy, asthma, saber pain. And from this industry alone, marijuana can create at least 100,000 jobs. From the medical industry, marijuana can earn Mother Zambia a minimum of 15 billion US dollars per year. Marijuana can also be used for the manufacture of diesel and petrol. And from this industry alone, it can create at least 200,000 jobs and manage to earn Mother Zambia a minimum of 3 billion US dollars per year. Marijuana industrialization can also be used for the manufacture of paper. For example, paper for printing of money. And from this industry alone, marijuana can create at least 50,000 jobs and manage to earn Mother Zambia a minimum of 300 million US dollars per year. Marijuana industrialization can also be used for the manufacture of hand, body and hair creams and from this industry alone it can manage to create at least 100,000 jobs and earn Mother Zambia a minimum of 2 billion US dollars per year. Marijuana can be used for manufacture of bus and car body parts, helmets and from this industry alone it can create a minimum of 200,000 jobs and manage to generate for Mother Zambia a minimum of 3 billion US dollars per year. Marijuana can also be used for the manufacture of nutritional drinks, juices, creams, and from this industry alone, marijuana can create at least 200,000 jobs and manage to earn for Mother Zambia at least 500 million US dollars per year. Marijuana industrialization can also be used for the manufacture of textiles, clothes, canvas shoes, turkeys, and from this industry alone, marijuana can create at least 40,000 jobs and manage to earn to generate income for Mother Zambia in excess of 1.5 
billion US dollars. Yes. Zambia created thousands of jobs. Thousands of jobs. Billions of dollars in profits will be made. Green Party, the Peter Singamba, man of action to man of solution. Think outside the box. Hey, party doula. Hey, party woods. Let's look at a core message in your campaigns, which has been uh, legalizing. Uh, 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 you're calling it commercial marijuana. Yes, uh, industrialization of marijuana. You see, this is the wonderful thing if you, which you need to do as a country. Because, you see, as a Green Party, what we have done is that we have looked around the world. What is it which we can easily do in this country to turn around the fortunes of the country. You know, like I've always said, Gravaggio, we must be a very ashamed people, the Zambian people, to, bring, to, to be where we are today. Because this is a country which 40 years ago was so rich. The country which was at a level of uh, Portugal, which was at the level of Spain, a kind of country whose economy that time was bigger than the economy of Brazil, economy of Egypt, economy of uh, Indonesia, economy of South Korea, economy of Turkey. We were at a level where we were getting into the developed uh, country status. You know, with the GDP that time matching Portugal and, uh, and, and, and Spain. Today, we are a shadow of ourselves as a people of Zambia. We, we must be very ashamed because the economy, for example, of uh, Kenya was uh, less than our economy six times. Egypt was uh, three times smaller than our economy. Brazil, we couldn't talk. Now, where is our problem? You know, you're coming from there, you have, re you have reduced to this level, your human development index. Is, is so, so, so worse off. You are being um, one of the uh, hundred and is it 48, 49 now, uh, country in the world with the lowest uh, human development index. We must be so ashamed to drop to this level. But why has it been like this? It's because we have allowed ourselves to trade in what I may call as mediocrity. You, 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 you want to cling on to the same recycled ideas. You know, uh, we, we were able to be brought to that level of uh, development uh, through mining. And mining, we must thank it, because this is uh, an industry which we started in 1902 and built mm. Zambia to where it is today. All those copper built towns were built from mining revenue. But we have reached the uh, end of the road for mining. In your view? You would rather we close the mines. No, if we're you, not saying that. We will close it to closing take a the mines. A very, very revolutionary stance. No, cl closing Radical. the mines. Closing the mines will not be a forced situation. They are already on their way closing. How many shafts have we closed on the copper belt now? And uh, you know for a fact, you probably don't know. Uh, most of the the mining operations on the copper belt will start closing on a serious note from 2023, and by 2030. Uh, Mining will not be a big story anymore. New mines will have opened. Probably. From where? You see, to it open a mine, you must have uh, uh, economic reserves uh, somewhere. You understand? Now, all the geological investigations that you have had in between the explorations, none of them is stri striking any uh, old body worth uh, developing. Okay? So if you don't have any economic old bodies, what do you mine? That is the story here. The only areas where there will be a little bit of sustained mining will be northwestern. But and, even and, there, and, and Wapula with manganese. Even the, what is manganese really as a as a mining uh, uh, mineral which you should be able to manage the population of Zambia? That is nothing. Our economy is being um, uh, is shallowing in terms of uh, the resource envelopes and. Uh, 
Uh, that's why for us as a Green Party, we're saying, look, we are able to read ahead. The, the road ahead is very, very bad. So let's look at other alternatives. And that's why we're saying think outside the box. What can we do besides the current arrangements? We should be able to move this country forward. And that's why I'm saying uh, um, around the world, the, the fastest growing industry in the world now is uh, the smart smartphone business. That's the most lucrative smartphone business. It's the biggest industry. But the next one after smartphone will be marijuana. Right now it's the second fastest growing and most lucrative industry in the world with a, a business market of about $400 billion. Now, if you can move in very quickly ourselves, uh, using our plan, for example, as a green part, we're looking at a kind of plan which should be able to give us, from the $400 billion um, uh, global market, if you can capture at least $40 billion, and from the kind of... Which is about 10%? Have, yeah, 10%. 10 yeah. Then, then it means we can get going as a country. And when we're saying, okay, we, we want to... From our calculations, we're, we're working at the moment with the plan we have is for $36 billion, okay? But we can scale it up through export of, of, of raw material. And you should be able to hit 40, 40 uh, uh, I mean 10%, which is uh, $40 billion. And then we'll see this country turning around very, very quickly. So where do you start from in a practical way? Yes. Assuming you took over office. The first thing, if, I, if I'm elected on August 11, I become the president of this country, the first thing is to reform the Zambia National Service. Uh, we, we are now going to move away from uh, growing cabbage and match pasts and the things like that, put them into uh, um, marijuana cultivation. We are going to have a department within the Zambia National Service specifically for marijuana development. And there we are talking about recruiting uh, almost two million youths uh, because we want to have a farm, uh, a, a marijuana farm countrywide, okay, in all the 129 uh, districts. We we'll have one farm uh, where we will recruit these youths to undertake marijuana cultivation. And uh, within those zones, we are now going to have processing plants for various um, uses, some plants to start manufacturing uh, uh, medicines uh, from marijuana, okay? So meaning that each province will have a pharmaceutical industry which will now start absorbing our, our technical staff, the engineers, the technologists, and so on and so forth from our universities. These, these boys that are... How long practically that would that take? You, you, you make it look so simple. Set up a pharmaceutical tomorrow and start manufacturing and, and producing these drugs. That's very simple. I mean, to put up a plant, is, is a, it's, it's not a, an, an expensive venture. You can do that in two or three months. You're done. It's uh, the issue of having resources. And uh, for, so Zambia, for, 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 Zambia, so for Zambia to have a pharmaceutical industry, it's not new. We used to have gamma pharmaceuticals in dollar, which used to produce drugs for our hospitals, local consumption and export. So it's a question of uh, uh, reorganizing ourselves. And with money which we, we already have, even from what we're using, which we're wasting through this so-called economic empowerment fund, and uh, so several other programs that are running, uh, we should be able to turn around the, 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 the uh, pharmaceutical industry in little time. We used to have uh, Interchem, which used to produce uh, lotions and stuff like that, creams, because one of the byproducts which we want is cosmetics. You know, the, the hair creams and so on and so forth from marijuana, we want to start producing those ones around. We want to have Interchem, which we used to have in all provinces, to produce uh, various uh, creams. Uh, and those are billion dollar industries for local and export. So your marijuana, with your marijuana revolution, you're giving yourself how many months? We're is saying, you know the days, the beauty. Year? No, the beauty with the marijuana program is that uh, there's, uh, first of all, the export of the raw material. You understand? We can export in the first instance, also doing the construction works, uh, to make money. We, we, we have, we have some, some, some of which we can export as raw material. Because right now, uh, countries like Germany, um, they've legalized, you know, like there's a number of countries that have legalized in between, okay? And Germany is one of them. And Germany is looking at 
uh, producing or cultivating some of the marijuana and importing the excess. You understand? And, and uh, the Czech Republic is legalized and also the Czech, uh, Czech Republic is looking at uh, importing. And several other countries, you know, at the time we were, we were coming up with this idea, we had an order, like uh, going into a contract for $15 billion. You understand? With you the, an order as Green Party? No, if you formed government, for example, we had to look at market. Because before you, before you start talking about, I'm going to produce this, you need to look at market. We had to contact the potential buyers. If we formed government and we start uh, this business, we know you are into this. Up to what quantity can you buy? So we can get up to $15 billion worth of this, so many tons. Okay, fine. So if we're going to form government, we can, uh, you can buy our stuff. Uh, yeah, no problem. We can get it. Because right now we're getting from, from uh, Uruguay. We're getting from California. And it's a little bit of exp uh, expensive because of... Uh, uh, production costs, but if it is produced from Zambia through that Zambia National Service program, which uh, where you have the production costs reduced, then that gives us uh, some comparative advantage to get from you. And that's why Zambia has uh, two advantage: the absolute advantage and the comparative advantage Com in terms of production of marijuana. So, so how do you mean? deal with the concerns that come up that you're going to have this substance abused? And, and you have a, a, a youthful society that's probably going to be destroyed. Well, we, we have said we're going to cultivate in high security zones within the, uh, the, the Zambia National Service framework, where they'll be guarded, highly guarded, like the way the Emirates mines are guarded, uh, like the way the, 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 the gold uh, and diamond facilities are guarded, like the way the soldiers guard their armories, their arms. You know, you don't go to abuse those guns. No one can go and get those guns and want to go and rob Bank of Zambia. 129 farms, 2 million youths guarded, and who, secured. Uh, because the, 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 the 2 million will be national services themselves. They will be soldiers themselves. You understand? We have how many soldiers in this country? Almost 20,000, is it? Are they abusing their guns around? We have how many policemen? Almost 20,000 also. Are they abusing their guns to steal things? We have uh, Zambia National Service. How many do we have? Zambia Air Force, how many do we have? Put together, how many do you have? Almost 100,000. But are they abusing their guns which they have? Are they abusing their, their bombs, their, their grenades, their weaponry? No, the muscle, they're not abusing. Why? Because there's military discipline. You know, you can't do this. And there are procedures, how to get this from that, how to enter. Thieves, do they go there in uh, Arakan barracks to steal anyhow? Can you enter state house? The state house is a very big yard. But did you can you go and but you still agree house? that even controlled drugs, even today, they still get out of those uh, control areas and, and are abused? You cannot have 100% uh, control in the world. But comparatively, is it, anyway, is marijuana more dangerous than what you have licensed? Marijuana is less uh, dangerous than alcohol. And alcohol is all over the shop. It is more dangerous to your health than the, the marijuana we're talking about. So, from, so legal, from commercial marijuana, do we hope or in future intend to see cannabis shops? Of course. Uh, what we're saying is that if we're going to have these um, farms, like I said, for us it's not more about recreational of marijuana. It's more about uh, industrial marijuana for industrial purposes and economic purposes and medicinal purposes. That's what uh, we're more concerned. The recreational aspect, really, is not a big story. I know Yungon is there in, in, in Eastern Province. You enjoy uh, for the Achi, Achi Ngoni. You know, you, you like smoking go, uh, for the Achi Ngoni. Uh, we will have to evaluate. Really. So you go in there and create so many security zones? No, but if... No, what, what I'm saying here is that for recreational purposes, for those people that use it, for example, for their traditional cultural aspects like the Ngonis do you can't uh, afford to be locking them up and throwing them in jail for what doesn't make sense as we close mr sinkamba are you ready for the election very ready for the election uh, we've gone around the country we have sold our message we have told the people that of all the parties available now in this election it's only the green party which knows where to get money and it's not more money 
it's bags and bags of money. We're talking about thirty-six billion dollars. You have a clear you know, vision, clear manifesto. Thank you so much for coming to show. Thank you so much, my brother. Man of solution. Think outside the box. Hey, party dola. Hey, party woods. Why you stand Man of action to man of solution. Tabo bakamba to gala pine na kwefi to fiale kana le kana wam. Kuri mitu baga yuko abako na industry textiles boy why is that day? To gala pine na mama pepper si fiale kana le kana boy ni shugu churi wam fuma po bakamba se youth muri na le stylo. Manja baga yuko bengi chamu zate ne swatamba two million jobs ni shiai kana wam. Na tu bamba mo ili. Come back, get in the party, boy.